Let us pray. Loving and faithful God, we give you thanks for your word. We pray now that you can give us insight and understanding by your spirit speaking in scripture. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You might have seen in the news, uh, I think this was on CBC, uh, they had commissioned a poll that Angus Reid had done that it was uh, basically marking the two-year, are we going to mark two-year anniversaries of the start of the pandemic? Hopefully we don't continue to mark that forever, but we kind of did this year. Um, and this uh, survey that was done didn't really paint the most hopeful picture of where we are in Canadian society. Uh, they, they looked at what people's opinions and experiences were over the last two years, and these are just a couple of the things that they found what people said. 61% agreed that Canadians' level of compassion for one another has grown weaker in the last two years. 79% agreed that the pandemic has brought out the worst in people. And 82% agreed the pandemic has pulled people further apart. Uh, about partway through 2021, uh, people started using this word languishing to describe uh, what we were all feeling. Just sort of this malaise, this sort of um, not necessarily feeling motivated, uh, just that's what languishing is. You're just, ugh, blah. But also, we've seen anger, division, and for the last three weeks, a terrible war in Europe. Uh, that seems beyond just languishing now. How do we deal with it all? Uh, but before that, um, it's so nice to see all of you <laughs> who are here, and I want to take a picture of you, okay? So just before we get into the answer here, okay? I can't, I can't actually get the whole thing in here. Let's, let's back up, okay? So I can mark this moment. As good uh, church folk, you've left the front row empty. Uh, oh, you know, Aaron, I don't think you got in the picture. It's all just, there we go. She's way over on the side. Um, oh, and, you know, while I've got my phone open, I might as well check Instagram. Uh, hold on here. Just, oh, no, oh, I don't have any notifications. That's too bad, no. No, no new likes. Oh, friends out on a date. That was nice last night. Okay. Oh, yeah, scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, this, by the way, is not the answer to my question, is it? This is how to not find well-being, right? Isaiah 55, verse 2, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy, <laughs> right? And yet, let's go to Snapchat or Facebook or Instagram. Our Reading begins like this. It says, ho, everyone who thirsts. We don't really talk like that very much anymore. Um, it's actually that first little word that we never would say is, like, is, is this. It's saying, pay attention. Pay attention. Everyone who is thirsty. Or maybe we could say it like this. Pay attention to your thirst. Because doing this turning to your phone, or whatever it is that you turn to. Most of the time, say it's watching the news or whatever it is. When we immediately turn to it, when it's our gut reaction, most of the time, we're not really paying attention. Don't even start with, why am I angry? Start with just noticing. Notice, pay attention, notice how you're actually feeling, and then pay attention to it. Because if, think about this, if, if, you, if you pay attention and you're paying attention to, say, your physical thirst, and you're thinking, oh, I'm so thirsty, and then you go and you order the extra large double-double at Tim's to get your coffee, that is not going to help you because coffee doesn't quench your thirst. What do you really need? 
You need water, right? We need water if we're thirsty, pure, natural, and just a gift, right? You need water. If you're feeling down, anxious, angry, lethargic, afraid, then, oh, let's watch the news. Or, oh, I'm just going to sit on my phone for a while and zone out while I also am watching TV and also trying to pay attention to the person who's talking to me. That's not going to work. And we actually know that it's ridiculous to think, oh, I'm feeling really angry, and the best way to deal with that is to sit and scroll through social media. That's going to, for sure, we know that that's a ridiculous move, but we do it. Our problem is... Noticing ourselves and then having the thought to stop and intentionally take a different action. Pay attention. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, is the opening invitation of this passage. But the waters are actually just the beginning of this passage. The the metaphor develops into a whole meal. And we read, come... You that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. For why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Delight yourselves in rich food. Delight yourselves in rich food. Food. I want to read to you again this same passage from the message translation because it's great. And I'll start from the beginning because instead of this little word, ho, we get, hey there, hey there, all who are thirsty, come to the waters. Are you penniless? Come anyway. Buy and eat. Come buy your drinks, buy wine and milk, buy without money. Everything's free. Why do you spend your money on junk food, your hard-earned cash on cotton candy? Listen to me. Listen well. Eat only the best. Fill yourself with only the finest. And then after that, we get this little verse, verse 5. And in the message, it says this, pay attention. Right? actually says that, pay attention. Come close now. Listen carefully to my life-giving, life-nourishing words. Isn't that great? And some of you are thinking, so is this sermon about spend less time on social media and watching the news and just spend more time reading the Bible? Well, yes. (laughs) Yes, it's about that. But there's more. There's more, right? This is actually a plea to first pay attention and realize what our tendencies are and then begin to resist those tendencies and turn to God, who will help us to further resist those tendencies. We are languishing, we are afraid, we are divided, we are anxious, and we still go to the junk food and the cotton candy, and we even pay for it, yet there is rich food that brings delight and it's free. Verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. You can actually seek God. You can actually pray and actually have access to God, and this is good. And then verse 7 says, Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. And this is one of those verses we want to just skim over and forget about. I always thought verses like this were about how sin, bad things, uh, that sin is both our actions and our thoughts. Whoa, how harsh. Oh my goodness. Our thoughts can be sin. But lately, especially in the last couple of years, I've been thinking about how our thoughts actually can get out of control, right? And they can kind of spin and be unhealthy. And maybe this is a a way to think about this is that, it, that even our thoughts end up being broken and unhealthy kind of things. We end up in unhealthy thought patterns, and sometimes that's directed at others. Anger, pushing people away, resentment, jealousy. 
And then other times, those unhealthy thought patterns are directed at ourselves. I'm a bad person. Guilt, shame. And all of that, all of that is broken. And here we are told, forsake those thoughts, right? Forsake those thoughts. But it's really, really hard to forsake those thoughts. And it's especially hard because we have a lot working against that. We have a lot working against us. Because it's not just as easy as, okay, I'm, I'm, I just won't reach for my phone. I just, look, how, look how easy it is for me to just get my phone, right? It's not as easy as that. One of our greatest challenges that we face today, actually, is that we're living in an era of persuasive technology, is what it's called. And I'll read to you a quote from a, a, a web page. This is from an organization called Human Tech. Uh, and they're, they're the good guys, by the way. They're not, this, isn't the, this isn't terrible. This is, this is just trying to provide information about how humanity and technology actually intersect to help, hopefully help us to embrace our humanity more, actually. Um, so here's the quote. It says, platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok are built on persuasive technology, technology created specifically to change its users' opinions, attitudes, or behaviors to meet its goals. Do you get that? Right? We sometimes think that what we might consume through some of those channels are, oh, I'm following this person, I'm following that person, and I'm okay with being shaped by those opinions and, and, and what they are putting out there because that's who I've chosen to follow. But actually, persuasive technology is created to specifically change your opinions, attitudes, or behaviors to meet the goals of the technology of the companies that own those technologies. Right? Technology companies, this is the rest of the quote, consider factors like motivation, ability, and triggers when they are designing their apps with the goal of persuading you to spend more time clicking and scrolling. That's actually the goal, is to get what? Your attention. And what is the call at the beginning of our passage? Pay attention. <laughs> to what, though? Tristan Harris, who's the president and co-founder of the Center for Humane Technology, wrote this. If something is a tool, it genuinely is just sitting there, waiting patiently, like this lighter, right? It's a tool. It's just waiting there for us to be able to light the candle before the service starts. If something is a tool, it is just sitting there waiting patiently. If something is not a tool, it's demanding things from you. It's seducing you. It's manipulating you. It wants things from you. And we've moved away from having a tools-based technology environment to an addiction and manipulation-based technology environment. That's what's changed. Social media isn't a tool that's just waiting to be used. It has its own goals, and it has its own means of pursuing them by using your psychology against you. So you see, we have a bigger challenge in our world today. Because we end up feeling certain ways. Negative feelings, anger, resentment, etc. And the easy thing to do when we're feeling bad is to sit there and scroll. And why is that the easy thing? Because it's been made easy. And our minds trick us into thinking that this activity will somehow provide us with something better. And it doesn't. And sometimes we think, that's oh, just a bit of fun or just a distraction. But other times, it becomes an addiction. And this is because it has been intentionally designed that way. So we have to actually do even more than just notice how we feel. We also have to notice if we are trying to solve the way we feel by going to places that are not designed to help us. 
Even something like the news, it's not designed to help you become calm, right? It's not designed to help you if you're struggling with getting angry. It's actually kind of designed to help you get more angry about whatever the next piece of news is. That's how they sell the news. It's not that you can't go on social media. It's not that you can't read the news or watch the news. Of course you can, but it's, you've got to have this awareness, right? You've got to notice what's going on inside of you if you're just getting angrier and angrier the more things you consume, then maybe it's not solving that problem of anger. We have to notice if we're trying to solve the way we feel by going to the places that are not designed to help us but are instead designed to actually manipulate us. And we think we can intentionally just choose something else. Just, just, choose di- just choose a different activity. Like go for a walk. But those are good. That's good advice, sure. But the something else that we choose actually matters for our long-term well-being. In this verse, we're told, let them, it's referring to those Wicked, the wicked who are supposed to forsake their ways and forsake their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord. Why? That he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. As in, it actually, everything that's happened up to this point, you can, you can return to the Lord and there is abundant mercy. Wow. And, but the theme of the, what's going on in our minds, our thoughts, that continues in the rest of the passage, where Isaiah, the prophet who is speaking and then maybe writing these words, is saying, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. This is what God is saying to us, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is good news. It's like saying, you know what? As human beings, we cannot think our way out of our thoughts. We cannot think our way out of our problems because our thoughts are actually really hard to overcome. But when we go to God and really seek God's thoughts, well, God's thoughts are totally different. They are higher than our thoughts. So, notice how you actually feel and stop before doing anything. Notice your thirst or your hunger. What is it that's within you? And then two, seek God, pray, listen to God's words of life. Go to the place of rich food, of refreshing water, and even of the finest wine, but it's free. Those are our steps. Those are our steps. And it's so easy to doubt that any of this that I'm saying will make any difference at all. It's really easy to doubt that. And so let me read the part. Um, Ashley read our reading beautifully, and, um, and, and we, we stopped at a certain point. You always stop at a certain point, obviously, in a reading. Um, the two verses that come right after the, the appointed reading for today I want to read those to you. This is what they say. Uh, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Okay, what, what's all that about? What's all that about? It, it's basically saying, look, this doesn't depend on us. Um, think about the rain or the snow. Let's not think about the snow. Let, I know it says that here, rain and snow, but let's just think about rain. Let's do that because we'd like the snow to continue to melt. Um, think about the rain, right? It rains, and what happens when it rains? Well, eventually, the water some of the water anyway, evaporates and goes back up and finds its way back into becoming clouds and then it rains again. Like that's, that's what happens, right? And if you just took that as what happens with the rain, you would say, well, that's completely pointless. 
that's ridiculous. Why, why do we care about that? So it rains on us and then some water evaporates and goes back up and just to rain again, over and over again. Well, that's a pretty grim metaphor for our life as well. But you see, the rain doesn't just do that, does it? It has a really important purpose. Without the rain actually falling, nothing will grow. The rain accomplishes its purpose when it comes to earth. And when it returns to the heavens, then it can come again. So it is with God's word that comes down from the heavens like the rain, accomplishes its purpose before it goes. God's word isn't without purpose. It is here to be read and heard and experienced. And Jesus is God's word made flesh. So if we want to talk about God's word coming among us, with purpose, sent to us to be listened to, to experienced and consumed the body of Christ given for us, the blood of Christ shed for us, life for this world, return to heaven only to once again come again, no more languishing, no more fear, no more sorrow, no more war, No more division, no more anger or hatred. God's word accomplishes what God sets out to accomplish by God's word. God's word does not return to the heavens empty, is what this passage says. And this all happens beyond us and will happen without us. But what a gift that we can participate in it, in God's word, in Christ, the source of all that is good. So yes, notice, notice yourself how you're feeling and seek God, but know as well that it does not depend on you. Simply receive what God is offering, this rich, rich feast. The very uh, last verse that we didn't read uh, goes like this. And isn't it a great, uh, it's it's one of these verses that we might have heard um, pulled out of this passage. But let's reattach it to this passage because it's a great ending. Listen to this. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Do we know that verse? We know that verse. Amen. We're going to 